good to see everybody here tonight and uh, all very, very welcome. I'm going to start with a wee bit of community singing. Uh, start with hymn number 361 in the hymn book. Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. Overall victorious in its bright increase. And we'll sing the first three verses of this beautiful hymn, 361. <laughs> number 351 when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul and again we'll sing three verses uh, verses one two and four of this beautiful hymn <laughs>
hymn 370, I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. You heard last night, if you were here, about the great love of Jesus Christ for sinners. And you know, we've no other story to tell you tonight but that of the cross work of Jesus Christ. Every night, the evangelist faithfully stands here and proclaims to men and women their need of Jesus Christ as Savior. And you know, we'll do that night by night because that is the only hope of the sinner, Jesus Christ. So we'll sing another three verses of this beautiful hymn, uh, verses one, three, and four. I love to tell the story. going to make a start tonight and we're going to sing the hymn number 265 265 in the hymn book I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean 265 you have it up on our screen let's all stand together and worship God please <laughs>
was very good singing. Let's bow for a moment in prayer. Just a moment or two to still our hearts. Let's all pray. You might want to offer a prayer yourself as you sit there in the pew. It might be a good thing for us all to pray. Speak tonight. Speak for thy servant heareth. In the quietness and in the stillness we draw near into thy sacred presence. We're, th we're thankful again for the opportunity to be able to draw nigh to God. And thou hast said that if we draw nigh to God, that God will draw nigh unto us. That would be our greatest desire tonight for the Lord to draw near unto us and speak to our hearts. We pray for that still small voice that it might speak to needy hearts gathered here tonight. It will bring a word of encouragement to the children of God in this age in which we live of burdens and cares. We're thankful that burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. We pray for those who have gathered with us and we're thankful for them who as yet know not Christ the Savior. We pray that they too will hear that special, still small voice speak into their hearts. The voice of Jesus saying to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He that cometh unto the Father by me will in no wise be cast out. And that's a wonderful thing about the gospel. It's a gospel of mercy, a gospel of grace, a gospel of compassion, a gospel of good news. It's a good news for men and women living in a dark world, a world full of sin and rebellion against God. It's the good news that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The apostle Paul was able to testify that he was the chief of sinners. So if the chief of sinners has been saved by grace, thank God there's mercy for men and women, not only here in the meeting tonight, but in this land of ours that we love and cherish. There's mercy for all those who will come to God through faith in Jesus Christ. And so whatever the need may be tonight, and only God knows the needs that we have in our hearts. Only God can discern what's there. Maybe we can't even share what's there with a loved one, maybe with a husband or wife or a son or daughter or a pastor. But the Lord knows the longings that are there, the desires that are there, the fears that are there, the uncertainties that are there. And maybe that deep longing for peace with God, loving Heavenly Father, whatever that need may be tonight, may hearts be opened May eyes be opened, may ears be opened, and oh God, may the healing balm, the healing balm of the gospel, be poured into troubled hearts, bringing healing and deliverance and salvation and the joy of sins forgiven. This is the work of God. We're thankful for thy servant, for his ministry last week and on the Lord's day. Thank you for help that has been given to him. Bless thee for his ministry and song and for the messages that have stirred our hearts and blessed our souls. But especially we're thankful for the message that he has been consistent in preaching. The only message that a preacher has to declare, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And as he preaches that old, old story tonight, may the Lord give him enabling. And grant Heavenly Father, not only give unto him enabling, but give unto the congregation a hearing and an understanding heart. Oh, blessed Lord, do that for Jesus' sake. And as thy servant comes to sing in a moment, may the Lord help him as he sings out thy praise, and then especially when he comes to the word. May God bless it to the salvation of needy souls to the restoration of those who may have grown cold at heart and for the edification of thy dear children, the people of God. 
Hear these our prayers, abide with us. For we pray these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Now Mr. McCray will sing to us. Thank you. Yes, my name's written there on the pages bright and fair. Yes, my name's written in the book of life. If you want to be up there, then down here you must prepare. Are you Christ was saying that from sin you could repent and your name would be in the book of life. You will have a great surprise if you fail to recognize that your name it must be in the book of life. Get down on your knees and pray. You from sin must turn away, or your name won't be in the book of life. Don't delay and don't forget that from sin you must repent. Or your name it won't be in the book of life. Get on on your knees and pray. Oh, from sin turn away. Or your name won't be in the book of life. Don't delay and don't forget. Sin, you must repent, or your name it won't be in the book of life. Yes, my name's written in the book of life. Amen. Yes, my name's written in the book of life. A woman tried many positions Yet the word so to Jesus she came And when the crowd tried to restrain her Oh, she whispered these words through her pain Touching Jesus That's all that matters Then your life will never be the same One way to touch 
touch him. You've got to believe when you call on his name. I was bound when I knelt at that old altar. They said, Jesus, oh, he'd meet your every need. And when this prisoner finally cuts Jesus, he set me free. Praise the Lord. That's all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There's only, only one way you can touch him. You've got to believe when you call on his name. Never be the same. For there's only, only one way a sinner can touch him. You've got to believe when you call on his name. Sinner, believe when you call on his name. Just believe when you call on his name. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. McRae. Well, I'd like to give you a word of welcome again tonight. It's good to have you. And I want to thank you for your support of the mission in these days. You may be here for the first time. Well, we're glad to see you. We bid you warmly welcome. And we trust that you'll be able to come again on another night before the mission uh, closes over thankful that you've come. May God be pleased to bless you richly through his word. Also a word of welcome to those joining online. Thank you for joining in, tuning in. May the Lord bless you wherever you are. I have been asking you to remember the mission at 12 noon each day. So wherever you're at, if you would take a moment or two just to turn your heart to heaven and ask the Lord to bless the going forth of the word each night here during the mission. So please remember that if you can and offer a prayer for God to come and bless the preaching of his word. And then we do have the prayer time at 7.30. A number of people have been coming in every night. Others have been bringing in their family and friends. We appreciate that. But if you can come and join with us for that short time, even five or ten minutes, uh, we'd be pleased to have you there and we would enjoy your times of prayer with us. So please keep that in mind as we continue with the mission during the week. Soon come to an end, and I trust that you'll make that effort to pray and come and join with us to encourage us in the gospel. And then the service at 8 p.m. And again, tomorrow night, uh, Dr. McRae will be uh, bringing messages and song as well as preaching. We don't take up an offering during the weeknights, but there will be a basket in the hallway uh, for the expenses of the mission. If you want to contribute, do so as you leave at the end of the service. I think these are the announcements. We're going to sing the hymn number 240. 240 ties in with what Mr. McCray was singing there. She only touched the hem of his garment as to his side she stole amid the crowd that gathered around him and straightway thankfully she was made whole. Let's all stand together joining in to sing God's praise. 240.
asked the Reverend McCray to come to bring to us the word of the Lord. Pray for him, that the Lord will bless him again tonight as he preaches the old, old story of redeeming love. Thank you very much indeed, brother, and thank you very much for coming. It's lovely to see you this Monday evening, and I know it had been stormy, and I believe there was some rain around, but we thank God for your presence. And, uh, of course, we're looking to the Lord for his presence, because, as we say, it's the Lord's presence that makes the feast. Thank you for uh, coming and just being with us. Do remember the meetings. They do continue tomorrow night and through on to Friday evening, as our brother said. And we'd love to have you with us. Now, remember, this mission will soon be over. And therefore, we want you to put a real effort in night by night and seek to get after someone. The Bible says, go out into the highways and byways and compel them. Compel them to come in. You say, maybe, well, I asked someone and they nearly took the nose of me. Well, what about it? Stick it back on again and go back again. And, you know, after persistence, you know what the Bible says? The man, the wee woman who came and was looking for something at night, it was late at night and she needed bread, and she went, and the door was closed, but because of the persistency, they got up and gave her what was needed. My friend tonight, we need to be persistent. Don't be put off the first time. Go back the next time, and the next time. Thank God God didn't give up on us when he called us the first time. Thank God he followed after us, and thank God he saved us by his sovereign and matchless grace. So therefore, do come tomorrow night, and the will of God will be here the word of God will be opened again, and we know the Lord will be with us. Now, open your Bibles. We're in Mark's Gospel and the chapter number 5. Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. And we're going to commence to read at verse number 21. Number 21 of Mark, chapter 5. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship onto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at Jesus' feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch, b touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, How seest the multitude throng thee? And seest thou who touched me? And he, that's Jesus, looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. And while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler, of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. And God will add his blessing to the reading of his precious word for his name's sake. Just let's bow our heads for a wee word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this Monday evening. 
We thank thee for this company of people gathered in thy house to hear thy precious word. And Lord, thou knowest every heart. Thou knowest the condition of every heart. Thou knowest the state of every heart. Thou knowest those who are saved and know thy so great salvation. Thou knowest those perhaps that are backslidden and once a walk with thee. But, oh God, they're following afar off and they're not happy in their backslidden state. And yet, Lord, they're just trying to go on as if, and just, Lord, they can continue in the state they are and yet they know they can't. One day they have to give account of their lives to thee. And Lord, perhaps tonight there are those who are not saved. And oh God, one day they too shall stand before thee to hear the words, depart from me, I never knew you. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that by thy Holy Spirit that thou will take of thy word this evening and may there be a message for every heart in this meeting tonight. We thank thee that thou art a God mighty to save. We thank thee that thou art a God ready to pardon. And Lord, we thank thee that there's not a man or woman, boy or girl, but Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ, thy son, can cleanse from every sin that stains their soul. Lord, maybe there's someone hopeless tonight. Maybe they feel that there's no hope for them. Oh God, we thank thee for the great, grand news of the gospel that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Oh God, answer prayer tonight. Cover the preacher. Cover me in the precious blood. Fill me with thy blessed Holy Spirit. I take the promised Holy Ghost. Oh God, tonight as I come to thy word, I dare not try to preach it in my own strength. But oh God, fill me with the power that I need. Anoint me with fresh oil. And tonight, Lord, have all the glory and bring souls to your Son. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. I wonder, my friends, in your life, have you ever faced a situation and looking at it personally, you thought there was no way through? As you looked at that situation that you were facing, it was an absolute impossible situation. It was impossible to solve. Maybe you've got a loved one. And maybe tonight they're so far away from God and the old devil saying to you, you know, it's absolutely impossible for that person to be saved, that loved one, that son, that daughter, that mom, that dad, that grandchild, there's no hope for them. That friend, because they're too far gone, it's absolutely impossible for them to be saved. Do you know what the Lord Jesus called the devil? He called him a liar. And that's what he is. He said he's a liar. The word of God asks a question in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 27. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there any situation too hard for the Lord? Whatever you're going through, my friend, whatever you're facing tonight, is there anything too hard for God to solve? Is there anything too hard for God to deal with? And the answer, you know, let me tell you, in that same chapter, that 32nd chapter of the book of Jeremiah, believe it or not, the question was answered before it was asked. Isn't that amazing? See, God knows all about our doubts and fears. And in Jeremiah chapter 2, 32, and in the verse number 17, it says, Ah, Lord God! There is nothing, nothing too hard for the Lord. There's not a situation too hard for God to solve, friend. There's not a problem that's too hard for God to bring you through. And there's not a soul too hard for God to save. So I say to you, moms and dads, I'm saying to you, sons and daughters, listen, don't give up. Don't give up. What did Jesus say to Jairus? He said, be not afraid, only believe. Only believe all things are possible. If you only believe. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19. The Lord Jesus Christ was asked the question, who then can be saved? It is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. Who then can be saved? You know what Jesus said? With men, 
This is impossible. So it is. Absolutely impossible for man to be saved outside of Christ. But listen, listen to what Jesus said. With men, this is impossible. But with God, I'll bring him into the situation. With God, all things. All things. Get that grip your heart, friend. With God, all things, not some. With God, all things are possible. Thank God he's the God of the impossible. There's nothing too hard for God. And then in Mark's gospel, chapter 9 and verse 23, if thou canst believe, here was a father, and his boy was being destroyed by the devil, and the demons were tearing him and casting him down and even tried to throw him into the fire. And the Lord Jesus was up there on the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and he came down from the mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw a gathering of people gathered round there, and they're in deep discussion, and Jesus entered in. And Jesus asked them what was wrong. And the man said, my son, my son, and my, the, the devil has cast him. There have been times he has tried to cast him into the fire. He's tried to destroy him. And I brought him to your disciples to be healed. But they couldn't heal him. You know what Jesus said? Bring him to me. Bring him to me. You know that father came. Jesus says, if you only believe, and the Father said, Lord, I believe, help thou my own belief. For Jesus said, if thou canst believe, Mark 9, verse 23, all things are possible to him that believeth. God, give us faith tonight. The faith as a grain of mustard seed can remove that impossible mountain. For there's nothing too hard for God. And friend, when you come to the book of Mark's gospel, you'll find that's so. You'll find that there's nothing too hard for God. Because in chapter 4 of Mark's gospel, the chapter before the one we read tonight, the Lord Jesus Christ, we find, it says in verse number 35 of Mark chapter 4, The same day when the even was come, Jesus saith unto his disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they sent the multitude away, they took him, and he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. Here he is, my friend. And the storm's raging. And the Bible tells us that they awake him out of his sleep and said, Master, do you not care? But we perish. Here we're experienced. Seamen. Some of them experienced fishermen and the disciples. Listen. And there they were so scared. And the Lord Jesus was lying. His head was in the pillow. The Savior was fast asleep. And they wake him up. Master, do you not care that we perish? What an awful charge to make to the Savior, friend. Do you not care? We verse in first. Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth. He careth. He careth for you. It's interesting, you know, there's two different kinds of care in that little verse, 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, Casting all your care. That's anxious care. Maybe that's what you have tonight. You're sitting in this meeting tonight, and let me tell you, nobody knows what's going on in your heart. But you have anxious care. You're carrying burdens, friend, that nobody knows about. Perhaps you've never shared them. Your care. And yet the Word of God says, child of God, casting all your care, that's the anxious care, upon him. For he cared. That's different. That's loving care. I want to tell you tonight, the Lord who has got loving care for his people, able to take care of all your anxious care. But you've got to do something. Cast them on him. 
No, that means you've got to let go. How many men and women, let me tell you, and they're carrying burdens tonight, and they get down on their knees and they tell the Lord, Oh God, here's my burden, here's my problem, and oh God, I'm asking you to help me through it, and oh God, solve my problem. You get up on your knees and put the burden back on your shoulder and walk with that big heavy burden for the rest of the day. That's not casting your care on him, friend. That's not casting your care. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth. He's able to look after your anxious care. Thank God he can see you through. And there they were. No, Jesus did. Verse number 39, he arose and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, peace be still. One ceased. There's a great calm. You see, my friend, here was a storm around these disciples. But he's the master of the deep. And there's not a wave too deep, friend. Thank God there's not an ocean too deep. Of problems and anxieties and cares. But thank God he's master. He's master of the deep. And he just steps forth. And he says to the winds, be still. And the wind ceased. And the word of God says, there's a great calm. Notice verse 37, a great storm. But when you come to verse 39, a great calm. Child of God, can I ask you a question? Is there a great calm in your soul tonight? Some years ago when I went to Macrofelt first, there was a family there, a dear widow woman. Her husband died. She was a far, lived in a farm, and she had a big family, most of them sons. And she came. She was a godly woman. She came to the services Sunday by Sunday, brought her family with her. But then the family had grown up, and some of them started to go out into the world, and one of the boys even went to prison. And mommy's heart was breaking. One Sunday morning I was preaching on that text of Scripture, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And I said, friend, let me tell you, you've got to cast. You know, if you cast a stone, you don't keep it in your hand. You've got to let go. How many times have you rehearsed your problems to God, friend, and you've never let go? You carried it with you for the rest of the day. That's not casting your care upon him. After the meeting was over, she was going out through the door. This woman stopped and she said to me, Mr. McRae, God spoke to my heart this morning. What you talked about today is what I've been doing for years because my children are going wrong. And I've been telling the Lord about them, but I got up on my knees and I Carried the burden myself again instead of casting upon the Lord. But she says, by the grace of God, I'm going to let go. I never stop praying for them. But when I do, I leave them with him. You know what God did, friend? One after the other, God brought the family in. And I say to you tonight, I don't know what you're carrying tonight. In God's name, let go. Let go. Let God! Let God take over bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or can't see. Yes, he's the master of the deep. But then let's come quickly. Go to chapter 5. And you meet another man. The storm's not around him, friend. No, the storm's within him. There's a storm going on inside him. He's possessed of the devil. He's been driven out of his home. He's lying amongst the tombs. They even tried to put chains upon him, but my, there were no use. He tore them asunder like confetti. confetti. He tried to kill himself. And then the Lord Jesus Christ said, remember, go to the other side. 
and he came. Thank God he came at the right time. He came in the right place and he came for the right person. For whenever the Lord Jesus came, that man possessed of the devil came running, running and fell down to the feet of Jesus. He says, I worshipped him and he cried, verse 7 in a loud voice, What am I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Ah, the old demons of hell were tormenting him. And Jesus said, verse 8, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. But thank God they had to go. You know what the Bible tells us? Verse 15, And they come to Jesus, that's the people around the neighborhood, to see him that was possessed with the devil and had legion. And what's he doing? He's sitting, he's clothed, and he's right mind. Who made the difference, friend? Jesus. For thank God he's not only master of the deep, he's master over the demons. Now I don't care what demon of hell that grips your soul. I don't care what sin has you enslaved tonight. Praise God he breaks the power of cancel sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. Praise God his blood avails for me. And there he's sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. A calm within his soul. Who did it? Only Jesus. And then read on down the passage of God's word and where we started tonight. There's a man, he was a ruler of the, of the synagogue. He was Jarius by name. And Jarius had a little girl. She was 12 years of age. Verse 23, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I have no doubt that Jarius tried everyone and everything to cure his child. But they couldn't. And then he's forced to come to Jesus. It says in verse 24, and Jesus went with him. Jesus went with him. Thank God the compassion of Christ, friend. You see, as a ruler of the synagogue, he would have no time for Jesus. His circumstances, the tragedy of his child, friend, forced him to the feet of Jesus. And yet when he came to Jesus and he said, I pray thee come, lay thy hands on her that she may be healed, that she may live. Jesus went with him. Of course, you go down to verse 42. Verse, sorry, down there to verse, on down the chapter in verse number 38. Or verse 35, and while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue certain, how certain, which said, My, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any more? It seemed all hope was gone, but not with Jesus. You see, Christ came into that situation, friend. And the Bible says in verse 41, and he took the damsel by the hand and he said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked. She's the age of 12 years. He's the master over death. Thank God even the grave. He's master there. But one day he walked out of it. Yes, he died upon the cross. But praise God, in the resurrection morning, the Savior left the tomb. The tomb was empty. 
master over death. But the one I want us to look at tonight is there in the middle. Verse number 25. He's master over disease. Another impossible situation, friends, that only Jesus can solve. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had was nothing better but rather grew worse when she heard of Jesus and came in the press behind him and touched his garments. I want us to look at this woman tonight. Notice, first of all, her distress. This woman was plagued with a disease. She had it for 12 years. She had an issue of blood. In other words, that was a flowing of blood. She was hemorrhaging. Internal bleeding. A very sick woman. Twelve long years untold suffering. And as that blood flowed from her, she got weaker and weaker and weaker, anemic. No energy. Every day it was a burden. And yet, her body wouldn't heal. But you know, her distress was this, because of her sickness. In Leviticus, in the chapter 15 and verse 9, 19, because of her issue of blood, she was looked upon as defiled. She was looked upon as unclean. Anyone who touched her, or anything she touched would be considered unclean. And because of her sickness, therefore she was an outcast. She was lonely. She was isolated. She was desperate. She couldn't mingle with others in public, for nobody wanted her. She couldn't go into the woman's court of the temple because they wouldn't have her. She couldn't work with others around her, unclean. And therefore she'd be driven to the place where she would beg for scraps for food. And she could only do it from a distance because of her sickness. And let me tell you this, here was a woman that was under the sentence of death. Without healing, she was headed to the grave. And dear unsaved person, let me tell you, my friend, you too have a disease. Oh, I know whenever the doctor examines someone and they mention that word cancer, you know how we dread it when our loved ones are diagnosed with it, or we. Somehow we feel it's a sentence of death. Wasn't it amazing? Whenever God diagnoses the disease of sin, it doesn't bother. And yet, my friend, sin is a disease that will not only take you to the grave, It'll take you to hell. It'll take you to a lost and Christless eternity forever. Here was a woman of herself. She couldn't get better. A friend of yourself, neither can you. That disease that grips your soul, that disease of sin that stains your soul and life of yourself. You can't let go. You're in the grip. You're a slave to it. You're under its dominion, under its power, in its grip. You can't of yourself set you free. Her distress, but notice her desire. Go verse 26. And she suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. What does that mean, friend? 
she longed to be healed. Ah, this woman, she longed, oh, that she would have a touch of healing upon her body. She didn't want to stay in her sickness, no. She longed to experience healing. And she tried everything, notice. She said, I suffered. She suffered many things of many physicians because in actual fact, some of the medical practices of that day didn't heal her. It added to her suffering. Made her problem worse. And notice she didn't try one physician. She tried many. Why? Because she wanted to be healed. Or they took her money because notice what it says here. She spent all that she had. And not only is she dying of her disease, and not only is she an outcast, not only is she isolated, not only is she lonely, she's penniless. All in the name of healing. She tried many physicians. Maybe there's someone here tonight. You've been troubled about your soul and you've been troubled about eternity and you know that one day you have to meet God and you're trying. You're trying your way of healing. You're going to man's physician. You're trying the church. You're trying religion. You're trying rituals. You're trying to pay. You're trying self-righteousness and self-efforts. But after all the trying, friend, not one of them can change your soul. Not one of them makes you better after all your efforts. You're nearer hell than ever you've been before and your soul is darker and more stained by sin than it has ever been after all your efforts. Yes, she had a desire for healing. Can I ask you a question tonight? Do you desire to be clean from sin? Do you really desire to be saved? Do you really desire that that sin's chain will be broken? That you'll be no longer bound and fettered by it? Here's a wee woman wanted healing. I wonder to you, are you just content in your sin? Notice she was bleeding, she was broken, and she was bankrupt after all her trial. But thank God that's not the end of the story. Notice her deeds. In the midst of her despair, look at verse 27. And when she had heard of Jesus, somebody told her of Jesus. What did she hear? Perhaps she heard about the leper that was healed that fell at the feet of Christ and cried, Lord, have mercy on me. And Jesus delivered him of his leprosy. Did you hear about the demon at Gadara? Over there, energized and enslaved by the power of the demons of hell. I don't know how she heard, but it says, when she had heard of Jesus, Word of God says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That's why it's important. If you have a concern for your loved one, friend, get them into the meeting. They need to hear. They need to hear the news of the gospel. They need to hear about Jesus. They need to hear about salvation. They need to hear about God's forgiveness. They need to hear about God's love. They need to hear about God's mercy. 
that poor lost and guilty soul that need to be here. I need you to tell them. And she heard of Jesus. The word of God doesn't tell me who told her. But thank God when she heard, something happened in her heart, friend. She came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be healed. You know, she believed what she heard. She believed. What she heard about this miracle working Jesus, she believed. She believed that Jesus Christ was the answer to her need, that he could meet her need. And in her heart she knew, I've got to get to Jesus. And I tell you tonight, if you want to get to heaven, you've got to get to Jesus. If you want to be saved, you've got to get to Jesus. If you want to escape hell, you've got to get to Jesus. For Jesus was her only hope. You know, the Lord Jesus didn't say, I am a way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way. He's the only way. He says he's the truth, he's the life. And then he said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Ah, oh, she wanted to get to Jesus. But she had a problem. There were obstacles in her way. What was the obstacle, friend? Well, the Bible tells us it was a crowd that thronged Jesus. There's a multitude, verse number 31, thou seest the multitude thronging thee. There was a crowd around the Lord Jesus Christ. And for her to get to Jesus, she had to get past the crowd. You see, let me tell you, if any person had to recognize that woman in that crowd, that woman would have been shamed. They would have called her out. You're unclean. What are you doing here? Tell you something else. She could have been stoned. She could have been stoned. Even to death. Because anyone who touched that woman in that crowd, ceremonially, was unclean they would have been looked upon as being defiled. That's why she was isolated. That's why she was an outcast. That's why nobody wanted to know her. She was unclean. So what would you do, friend? She had to get past the crowd and say, I must get to Jesus. I don't care what the crowd says. I don't want care what the enemy says. I don't care how they humiliate me. I don't care whether you ridicule me. I don't care whether you beat me. I need to get to Jesus, and that's all I want. And she pressed through the crowd. Remember, she was hardly fit to move because 12 long years, and she was so weak. And there were so many crowding around the Lord Jesus and she had to push her way through the crowd. Tell me, what's stopping you from being saved? Maybe it's the crowd. Are you afraid of what people have said to you if you could see it? Are you afraid what your family will say if you went home tonight and say, I give my heart to Jesus? Are you afraid what, what some of your friends at work tomorrow would say if you say, I got saved in, in the mission up there in the free church in, in Coleraine and I, I got gloriously saved and my sins are forgiven? Maybe they'll humiliate me. Maybe they'll ridicule me. Maybe they'll laugh at me. Maybe they'll scoff at me. Well, they scorn at me. Let me tell you, my friend, you've got to get past the crowd and get to Jesus. My old companions, fare you well. I will not go with you to hell. I mean with Jesus Christ as well. She was determined to get to Jesus. Come with me. 
I've got to get to Jesus. She had to get past the crowd. She was weak. But she was desperate. So desperate she, she risked everything to get to Jesus. And she came and she touched Jesus, the hand of faith. Notice something else, friend. She came as she was. Defiled, unclean, an outcast, lonely, penniless, desperate. She came as she was. And friend, that's the only way you'll be saved. You've got to come as you are. Some people say, you know, well, I'd need to clean up my life. My friend, let me tell you, the reason why you're coming to Jesus is because you can't clean up your life. You can't change your life. You can't save your soul. That's why you've got to get to Jesus. You've got to come as you are. That's why Charlotte Elliott wrote the words of that wee hymn, just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me. Charlotte Elliott was at the age of 32. She suffered a serious illness and she was left a semi-invalid for the rest of her life. Within a year of taking that illness, she went through a spiritual crisis and she confessed to an evangelist, Henry Mallon, that she didn't know how to come to Christ. And he said, Charlotte, you come to him just as you are, a sinner. And she wrote the words of that hymn, just as I am without one plea, O Lamb of God, I come. Then you come as a sinner. She came as she was, but she came in faith. Because look at verse 28. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Not a doubt about it. Not I might be whole. Not maybe I'll be whole. She says, I might but touch his clothes. I shall be whole. She believed. She reached out the hand of faith. Times away. Notice her deliverance. Verse 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. Verse number 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Thank God her healing was powerful. She was whole. Her healing was personal. She was whole. Her healing was permanent. Hallelujah. She went away whole of the plague. Jesus doesn't do a half job. Thank God he saves from the guttermost to the uttermost all that come unto God by him. And if you come, thank God he'll save you, friend. You would not do the work. He does the work. He'll save your soul. And notice her declaration. Jesus says, verse number three, who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples said, but master, sure, there's a whole crowd around you. What do you mean? That throng, they're all touching. I don't know what he said. Listen, who touched me? There's only one in that crowd touched him with faith. The hand of faith. And you know when the wee woman realized it, it says in verse number 32, and he looked around about, round about to see her. He knew exactly who it was. He knew exactly. So what was Jesus doing, friend? Verse 33. 
the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Just before we go, turn to the book of Luke's Gospel, that story, the record there is Luke's Gospel. And when you go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, and you'll find in verse 47, it says this, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, no, you can't hide from God, friend. There's not one of you sitting in this meeting tonight, but God sees every last one of us. There's not one of you hiding. And when she saw she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. Listen to this. She declared unto Jesus before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. There in front of that crowd, she testified. She wasn't ashamed. Ah, yes, she came trembling. And she fell down before him, but she told him, Jesus, I came to you because for 12 long years I have been dying. I was unclean. I was an outcast. I was helpless. I tried every physician. I tried everything. I paid everyone. But no one could heal me. And then I heard of you, Lord. And I said, if I but could touch your clothes, I'd be healed. And Lord Jesus, I came. Broken and bleeding and bankrupt. But I came to you, Lord. Listen. And you healed me immediately. I'm healed. What a testimony of the amazing grace of God. Let me tell you, if you come to Jesus tonight, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank God he'll save you. You bring your sin to the blood. Thank God the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, will cleanse you from every sin. And you go home clean. Redeemed. But there's one last thought. Just go back to that passage again. In Mark chapter 5, don't miss the last, her delight. Verse 34, and he said unto her, daughter, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Do that's the only time that Jesus called a woman in scripture, daughter. And in the original, that word can mean beloved. See, when you're a daughter, friend, you're in the family. And that's what happens. As many as receive him, to them give he power to become the sons, the daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. And praise God, you become a child of God. Child of the King and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. How tender the Savior was. He says, Daughter, rejoice. Be of good comfort. Yes. Thank God thy faith hath made the whole. Go in peace. You can go home tonight with God's peace in your heart. Knowing that if God were to call you tonight, all's well. Not a fear. 
not a fear. He says, go in peace. Your sins are blotted out. You're whole. Saved. But here's the question. Will you do as this woman did? Will you come to Jesus? Come by faith. Taking hold of his promises. Believing what he says. Believing what he did for you at the cross. In the shedding of his precious blood. And finishing the work for your redemption. And cry out tonight, O Lamb of God, I come. Oh, may the Spirit of God draw you tonight. Draw you to Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless your word to our hearts. Thou knowest those that are in this gathering tonight. Thou knowest those that are struggling. Thou knowest those are God that are battling. The old devils tried to keep them away. But oh God, give them grace. Give them grace to come. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, friend. Let's sing a little verse of a hymn. Just as I am without one plea, heads bowed and eyes closed. But that thy, thou bidst me come to, to thee, O Lamb of God. I come. Will you come to him tonight? Will you say, Lord, save me. I perish. If there's one in this meeting, father, mother, son, or daughter, young person, or older person, that's the desire of your heart. You want the Lord to save you. You're a You want to come back. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, friend, and we sing this little verse of invitation, would you slip that hand above your head to indicate your desire, preacher, I want to be saved. Lead me to Jesus. When others have gone away, I don't want to embarrass you, friend, but I do want to see you saved. I want to see you saved. I want you to be rescued from sin's grip, Satan's power. I want the blood to be applied to your soul. O Lamb of God, I come. Let's sing the verse, just as I am. Just as I am without one but that I was shed for thee, that thou didst me come to thee. Is the one in this gathering tonight, father, mother, son, or daughter? Say, preacher, lead me to Christ tonight. Would you lift that hand and I'll see you? I come. I come. One final verse, just as I am and willing not. Just as I am and willing not. read my soul. Friend, don't wait another second. In God's name, come now. Come now to Jesus. For a man, woman, young person. Just lift that hand above your head. Indicate that desire. Reach your point to Jesus. Lamb of God, I come. I come. Heavenly Father, I know it's the hearts in this gathering. I pray in Jesus' name that thou will give deciding grace, O Spirit of God. Don't let the sinner walk away without you. Don't let the backslider go on another night. But, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name, by the blessed power of thy Spirit, oh God, call them and bring them to Jesus. Lord, answer prayer. Give deciding grace. Give them faith tonight to trust in thee. I pray in the Savior's precious name. And for his Amen. Amen. We're here to help you. Please, as others are going out, you wait behind and speak to me. But please don't go away without Jesus. 
This is God's opportunity, friend. Maybe the last one. May God bring you now.